Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to start talking about the polar form of complex numbers. Now the polar form of complex numbers is very similar to the polar form of the real numbers that we've used in the past, those rectangular coordinates with x and y. But let's go ahead and set up our imaginary plane and let's see if we can figure out what this polar form of complex numbers looks like. In other words, we want a way that we can describe a point in space z which is equal to a plus bi instead of explaining it in terms of the real numbers a and b we want to be able to describe this point in terms of r and theta just like with our other polar form so let's go ahead and draw our triangle out here we're going to call this angle here theta remember theta is the angle between the initial side which lies right on top here of the real uh, axis and this terminal side where z is on or uh, or the line in which we're measuring r now here I have this r here that's the total distance from my origin to z and because z is a plus bi I know that this distance over here is b that's my vertical distance to z and my horizontal distance to z is a so r here is the square root of a squared plus b squared and we saw in the last video we have a name for this. We call this the modulus of z. So taking everything that we have here, um, a and b here are playing the roles in the polar form that x and y played before. So looking at our triangle, I see that a over r is equal to cosine of theta. So from here we see that we have a is equal to r cosine theta. So now we've written a in terms of r and theta. b over r is equal to sine theta. Just using our SOHCAHTOA again with this right triangle. So that gives us that b is equal to r sine theta. And we're almost there. Let's take a look what happens to z with these two. If my z is equal to a plus bi, well plugging in for what we found up here, a is r cosine theta plus, I'm going to go ahead and put the i in front, i, b is r sine theta and we can factor out this r and we get that the polar form of a number z go ahead and write this in a different color because this is our polar form is that z is equal to r cosine theta plus i sine theta and this is where r is equal to the modulus of z which we know is the square root of a squared plus b squared and for theta, just like in polar coordinates, we have that tangent of theta. Looking at my triangle up here again, we see tangent of theta, if this is my angle theta, is going to be b over a from SOHCAHTOA. And of course, this is where a is not equal to zero. So here's our polar form. Now very quickly, um, just dealing with this a not equal to zero just like we did with our uh, polar form of real numbers when a equals zero that means I'm lying here somewhere on this vertical axis here this is our imaginary axis so I have some point up here or some point down here somewhere along the axis that's the only time that I have an a equal to zero so when a equals zero if we have that z equals bi, this is the same thing as having an a equal to zero, then theta is going to equal pi over two if b is positive and theta is going to equal three pi over two if b is negative. Now if b is exactly equal to zero and a is zero then we have z equals zero which doesn't actually have an angle and um, we would still have a modulus equal to zero but we could plug any angle into sine and cosine here 
and if I have zero as a modulus multiplied by cosine and sine of anything, I'm still going to get zero. So there's not really an angle associated with the point zero, zero. So these are the only cases we really concern ourselves with when it comes to finding theta. And this makes sense. If I have a positive b, that means I'm at this point up here. This is my b greater than zero. And if I have a negative b, I'm down here. So this is my b less than zero. So here I have pi over two. And here I have three pi over two. And anywhere else where a is not equal to zero, we can use the fact that tangent of theta equals b over a. And just like in polar coordinates, there's sometimes going to be multiple answers for this theta. And actually, there will always be multiple answers. And we have to decide which one's correct based on what coordinate a plus bi is in in our complex plane. So let's see some examples of converting these complex points into their polar form. So let's say I want to write z in polar form where z is 2 root 3 minus 2i. Now I always need two pieces of information to write z in polar form. The first piece of information that I need is the modulus. My modulus is going to be r. So r is equal to the modulus of z, which we know is the square root of a squared plus b squared. So here my a is 2 root 3. So I have 2 root 3 squared plus, and my b is negative 2. Remember, this i is not actually a part of b. This i is just a qualifier to show that this is negative. And what this is saying is I have negative 2 i's. So I have, if I have b i's or negative 2 i's, we see that my b is just negative 2. We're going to go ahead and square it. Now continuing on, 2 root 3 squared. If I distribute this square, that's the same as 2 squared times 3. So this is going to be 12 plus negative 2 squared is 4. So we get that my modulus, or r, is square root of 16, or 4. And to find theta, we want to say, well, tangent of theta, this is equal to b over a. So that's negative 2 over 2 root 3. Reducing this down, my 2's cancel, and I have negative 1 over root 3, which we usually write as negative square root of 3 over 3. Now there's two places where tangent is negative square root of 3 over 3. One is in quadrant 2, and one is in quadrant 4. But notice that I have a positive a. My a is greater than 0, and my b is less than 0. So I've gone to the right of the origin on my real axis, down from the real axis on my imaginary axis. So these two together give us that z is actually in quadrant 4 on my complex plane. So I need to find the theta in quadrant 4, specifically, where tangent of theta is negative root 3 over 3. Now if it's negative root 3 over 3, we know that means I have a reference number of pi over 6, because in quadrant 1, tangent of pi over 6 is root 3 over 3. And in quadrant 4, that means that my theta is going to equal 11 pi over 6. Now you might say, well, what about negative pi over 6? And technically, that's correct. But we have a convention here. So as our convention, we always want to look for that theta where 0 is less than or equal to theta is less than 2 pi. And we're not going to go into a lot of detail on why we need this. Um, but suffice it to say, in complex numbers, as we go around multiple times, we're kind of changing what we're looking like. And it gets a little complicated. I don't want to go into it. But uh, to prepare us for the future, as a convention, we want to look for this theta between 0 and 2 pi. And we don't need both 0 and 2 pi. So if it's on that real positive axis, we'll just call that theta 0. OK, so now I have my modulus, or r. I have theta. So I'm ready to write my number in polar form. z, which is r, which is 4. Remember, we have r times cosine theta. We found that theta to be 11 pi over 6 plus i sine theta. So that's i sine 11 pi over 6. Now the theta should always be the same for the cosine and the sine. All right, and this is it. This is our polar form. We want to see if this matches what we looked at before. We saw our polar form here should be z equals r cosine theta plus i sine theta. And that's exactly what we have here. Our z equals r cosine theta plus i sine theta. Now at this point, you might be tempted to solve for sine and cosine and multiply 4 through. 
but that's actually exactly what we want to do if we get back to the form a plus bi right if I solve for cosine of 11 pi over 6 well I know that cosine of 11 pi over 6 is root 3 over 2 and sine of 11 pi over 6 is negative 1 half and if I multiply that 4 through root 3 over 2 times 4 is 2 root 3 and negative 1 half times 4 is negative 2 so we see this is how we get back to our form a plus bi that we started with so if you ever need to go from polar to rectangular all we do is solve the polar and simplify that's how we get back to our rectangular complex coordinates All right. before we finish up this video let's look at one more example of converting z to polar form let's say my z is equal to negative 2 plus i so exactly the same as last time we need to find r and we need to find theta so my r is the modulus of z so that's going to be the square root of a squared or negative 2 squared plus b squared now b here is 1 it's not i remember b is the coefficient of i it does not include i itself right this should be a plus b i see how the b and the i are two different things my b is just the coefficient so we're looking at 1 here 2 squared is 4 1 squared is 1 so my modulus here is going to be the square root of 5 now to find theta we look at tangent of theta is equal to b over a or 1 over negative 2 and we have to use some context again here my a is less than 0 and my b is greater than 0 and this only happens in quadrant 2 so I need to find the theta in quadrant 2 where tangent of theta is negative 1 half now this isn't one of the values that we're familiar with but if you plug this into your calculator well actually let's do it step by step in your calculator you'd say well let's say theta it's not equal to tangent inverse tangent inverse of negative 1 half is going to give me an angle in quadrant 4 so to get the correct angle in quadrant 2 I need to add pi to this and plugging this into your calculator right here in radian mode you'll get that this is about equal say about equal to 2.6 um, 678 we'll go ahead and round up to 2.68 okay so writing this in polar form now my z is going to be equal to my modulus or r which is 5 times cosine of theta or cosine of 2.68 plus i sine of theta or i sine of 2.68 and we should, again we should always have that the theta is the same in both the cosine and the sine. Alright, that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to look at multiplication and division of complex numbers in their polar form. And we'll see you there.